Hello, and welcome to How to Pass Inductive Reasoning Tests, Part 2, with me, Tim, from Grad Tests. So in this video, we're going to work through uh, five examples taken from Grad Tests. And if this video is finished and you want more practice questions, go to gradtest.com.au and you can get a lifetime subscription to 150 practice uh, inductive reasoning questions. So let's go straight into the first question. So what have we got here? We have what looks like, I guess, a clock um, with 12 segments and then one hand. So you can think of this as like a, an hour hand. And the only possible thing that can be happening here is there's some sort of pattern with the way the hand is moving around this clock. So we need to figure out what that pattern is. So let's figure out what this is. So from the first to second square, the hand moves two segments. And from the second to third, the hand moves three segments. From the third to the fourth, the hand moves five segments. So that sounds like to me uh, it's moving by an increasing number of prime numbers. So the next prime number after five is, of course, seven. So then the next point it has to be is here, that's around seven segments. So which answer is that? It's answer B. So B would be the correct answer here. Okay, moving on to the next question. So this one's a bit different. We've got uh, three shapes in each of the squares and it's always the same three shapes. Um, Shapes are always facing the same way, so there's no rotation going on. Uh, the shapes are always the same color, so there's no change of color happening. So what's going on? Well, the best uh, plan of attack is to go shape by shape. So let's figure out firstly what the triangle's doing. So the triangle goes from the top left to the middle on the left to the bottom left, back to the top left again. So clearly in the next uh, square, it has to be in the middle on the left. So that could be A, B, C, but not D. So you can straight away eliminate D. And if you're watching or you've watched the first part uh, of this video series, you'll have heard me talk about the elimination method. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We've just eliminated D as a possibility. So if you're rushed for time, and this is your last question, and you manage to eliminate D with a few seconds left, you've narrowed, uh, or you've improved your odds rather, from one in four to one in three, just like that, with a, a simple um, a simple bit of rationalization. Okay, so we know what the triangle's doing. So let's look at this sort of three quarter moon type of shape. So what's it doing? So it starts at the bottom, goes to the top, the middle, the bottom, so in the next square, it has to be at the top again, doesn't it? So that doesn't really narrow it down unto itself because we're still left with B, C, and D. But look carefully at C. You'll see the um, segment is actually rotated. You can see here there's absolutely no rotation going on in the segment. It's always facing the same way. So we can now eliminate C. So we're left with B and D as the potential answers. So now the final shape, we've got the star. So let's figure out what it's doing. So it's starting in the top right, the middle on the right, middle on the left, back to the top right. So then we're going to be middle on the right, just like the second step. So out of B and D, which one of those is correct? It's B. Okay, so B has to be the correct answer. All right, moving on to the next one. This one's a little bit different again. So there's a lot going on here. So what, what have we got? We've got some gray segments. We've got some black dots. We've got a spiral and we've got a, a small gray oval. So there's a lot of patterns to keep track of. So let's start somewhere. We've got to start somewhere. Let's start with the, um, the small gray oval here. So let's figure out what it's doing. So it goes top left, bottom left, Bottom right, top right. So it's definitely going to be on the top left again, isn't it, in the next uh, square in the sequence. So we can immediately eliminate A. So we're left with B, C, and D. 
Now let's figure out what these uh, series of circles are doing. So in terms of their number, we're going from 3 to 2 to 1 to 2. So it's gone 3, 2, 1, 2. So it's got to be 3 in the next square. And they're also moving position. So let's figure out how they're moving. So we've gone two segments to the left or anti clockwise, and another two segments, and another two segments. So in the next square, they're definitely going to be in this position with three dots. So that could be now either B or D. So we've now eliminated C. So B or D are the only options left. So let's figure out what this uh, spiral is doing. So it doesn't do anything between steps one and two. Steps three, it's gone one, two, three, four places anti-clockwise. Then it doesn't move again. So then in the next step, it's gonna go four steps anti-clockwise again, isn't it? So one, two, three, four, it's gonna end up in this segment. So out of B and D, which one of those is correct? It's B. So the correct answer is B. Um, now you might ask, well, what are the grey segments doing? Well, they're alternating between 2 and 1. So you've got 2, 1, 2, 1, and the positioning is random. So B also complies to that. So B is the correct answer. On to the next example. This one's a bit different again. So what have we got? In each of these squares, we have three shapes. So let's call them the outer, the middle, and the inner. The outer, the middle, and the inner. And there's got to be some sort of pattern going on uh, with these shapes. So what I want you to do is just first drill down on this inner shape here. So this, this pentagon in the middle in the first step. So let's just trace that through the sequence and see what the pattern is with this shape at least. So it starts out as the smaller inner shape. Here you can see it becomes the central shape. And then here you can see it becomes the outer shape. And here it's disappeared. So that's interesting. What about then the circle? What's it doing? So here it's the middle shape. Here it's the outer shape. And it's disappeared. And what about the triangle? Here it's the outer shape, and here it's disappeared. So what appears to be happening is basically the shapes move out one layer at a time, and a new shape is introduced as the smallest inner shape. So let's then look at this final step in the sequence, where the square is in the middle, so the square is the inner shape. So in the next step in the sequence, the square has to be the middle one, doesn't it? So we can go down to our options here, and we can see only A has the square as the middle shape. So that's good. So that one was easy because um, B, C, and D were immediately redundant once we found that um, pattern. Let's just make 100% sure that A is the correct answer. So the circle, which is the middle shape here, should be the outer one in the correct answer, which we see it is. And then there's a new shape in the middle. So A is the correct answer here. Looking at the final question, this one's a bit different again. There's a lot of arrows here. This one, this one looks a bit different. This one looks a little bit challenging. So you're always looking for patterns of how um, maybe the direction of the arrows are changing, or the, which ones are colored and which ones aren't, or whether there's any relationship between them. And I'm gonna tell you to focus in on this little arrow in the center. So let's see if this arrow has any effect on the other arrows. So in the first step, it's pointing to the left. And then the only difference in the next stage is that instead of the top left big arrow colored in, the bottom left arrow is colored in. Everything else has stayed the same. And now the small arrow has flipped. It's now facing towards the right. So then what happens? Between the second and third step, the only thing that's changed is this arrow is now colored. So 
we've moved sort of 90 degrees clockwise. And then this arrow is facing to the right again. So what happens between the third and fourth step? This arrow has now been colored in. The one around the outside isn't changing at all. The only other change is, again, a 90 degree movement in the arrow that is colored in in the center. So you see this arrow is facing to the right again. So the correct answer has to be the big arrow in the bottom left corner is still colored in. So that's either C or D. And then we're going to see another 90 degree rotation in the arrow that gets colored in in these smaller arrows. So out of C and D, which is the correct one? The answer is C. Okay. So that was just a quick video to dive down into five practice examples. And um, you can find a lot more examples at gradtest.com.au. In fact, you could get a lifetime subscription um, to give you access to 150 practice questions. There's also one full length uh, practice inductive reasoning test at gradtest.com.au, which is entirely free. Uh, if you've got any questions, you've got any comments, you need some help or some advice on an upcoming assessment or test, then please feel free to email me, tim at gradtests.com.au. Until then, happy practicing and thanks for watching the video.